So I'm really excited to be back in the Nebo School District today on Veterans Day to talk about a little of my own story and also celebrate the veterans of our country. This is where my veteran story begins. My personal journey with my husband, a soldier, begins in the time that I taught here. And I was teaching government classes and history classes and psychology classes. It was an election year then as well, a presidential election year. So as I drive down I-15, as I get off in Spanish Fork, just so many memories come flooding back to really my roots, the roots of our relationship, my husband and me, our service to our country. Um, I, I taught here before I even had my own family. These kids were my kids. These students I taught. One of them is a teacher here now, Jenny Dunn. She teaches English, and that just warms my heart to know, um, you know, she's taken on that profession. But it means so much to me to be here. A lot of reflection in my mind, not just over the past two years since my husband died, but the past 17 years of his service and the influence that his service had on me, and hopefully that I can have on others. Good morning, Eagles. Welcome to our virtual Veterans Day Assembly. Today, we are honoring three of our very own Maple Mountain veterans, Mr. Tom Porter, Ms. Denise Pollarda, and Mr. Scott Nelson. They have all served in different areas and aspects of the military, and we are so grateful for their service. We also have an amazing guest speaker, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Jenny Taylor, wife of the late Major Brent Taylor. We are so excited to hear from her, but first let's hear from some of our teachers. I served in the Army and the Utah National Guard and Reserves. Uh, when I served, I went through airborne school, and so I had a chance to jump out of airplanes. Um, when I served in the Reserves here in Utah, uh, one time we did a parachute jump out of a helicopter. It was just kind of fun where your doors open and you're sitting there on the edge and the helicopter takes off and everybody just shrinks down to ant size and get up to a certain height and they tell you to push yourself off and kind of enjoyable yeah. scary but enjoyable what branch of the military did you serve in uh, i was active duty army and now i'm army national guard and what's a favorite story or experience from your time serving uh many favorite stories um probably uh, when i was in afghanistan i was with some friends and uh we just got done with a mission, and uh, it was um, a successful mission. Everything went well. It went the way we, were, it went the way we had planned it, and um, uh, we were just kind of flying back, and uh, the sun was going down, and uh, you know everybody was safe, and it was it was there with like my brotherhood. It was a great day to be alive that day. So that's just one of the many. That was a good one. What branch of the military did you serve in? I was in the United States Marine Corps. And what's a favorite story or experience from your time serving? I thought I wanted to tell you gentlemen a story about Halloween and in the military. So my family, the last place we were stationed was in Okinawa, Japan. And the Japanese do not celebrate Halloween. But at Halloween, what they allow on the military bases in the housing areas where we live is they allow the uh, Japanese children to come in and trick or treat with the American children. So our first year there, what our experience was on Halloween, we had 500 kids come by our house on Halloween evening. And, and that was totally amazing. I've never seen so many kids all at one time in my entire life. And that was a huge number to prepare for. <laughs> Anyway, so um, that would be the experience I wanted to share with you. And that's a very happy memory. But all those, all those Japanese children. They, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much, teachers. We are so grateful for your service and for all that you do. Next up, we have our amazing guest speaker, Jenny Taylor. Jenny Taylor is a proud wife and widow of Major Brent Taylor, a Utah Army National Guard soldier who was killed in action in Afghanistan in November of 2018. Long before Brent and Jenny knew they loved each other, they both knew that they loved America and had a desire to serve their community and their country. Ms. Taylor began her career teaching history, government, and psychology classes right here in Nebo School District. She had a passion for helping today's youth prepare to be tomorrow's leaders. She now serves as a civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for the State of Utah, acting as a connecting point between soldiers here in Utah and the Department of the Army in the Pentagon. 
Ms. Taylor's most important job and greatest joy is being a wife and mother to her seven children, ages three to 15 years old. Good morning, everybody. It really is a joy to be with you here today. Even though we can't all gather together in the gym or auditorium for an assembly, I'm grateful that your school is taking the time to pause on Veterans Day and take a few minutes to talk about what in the world Veterans Day is all about. Some of you might remember this from my introduction, but I actually used to teach right here in Spanish Fork. I was a high school teacher, a middle school teacher, and a junior high teacher before my kids were born. And I taught history, government, and psychology. So as I walk through these halls, I feel like I'm right back at home. I wanna jump up to the whiteboard and start giving a lesson and asking a lot of questions. So I want you to pay attention for a minute because that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's not a test that you'll be graded on, but it is a test I want you to think about. As I ask you these questions, I want you to really think through the answers, maybe talk to the kid next to you about what their answer is, and hopefully by the time we go through this series of questions and get to the last question, you'll know exactly how to answer. So the first question is, what in the world is a veteran? We celebrate Veterans Day, but what is a veteran? A veteran is anyone who has served in any branch of the military at any time, for any length of time, anywhere around the world. So there might be a veteran that serves right here in Spanish Fork, Utah. There might be a veteran that's been overseas. It might be a veteran who's living or deceased. It might be someone who served 100 years ago or is enlisting today. When you think about Veterans Day, you've got to separate a little bit in your mind from Memorial Day. How many of you are familiar with both of those holidays? You can raise your hand even though I can't see you. You're probably familiar with Memorial Day because you get the day off of school. And Veterans Day is a day that you at least get a 20 minute break from class so you can come to assemblies like these. Memorial Day in the spring is the day when we honor the fallen, those who have died while serving in the military. And that's an important day and a sacred day and a day that we really need to pause and think of the blood that has been spilt for our freedoms. But when you fast forward to Veterans Day here in the fall, it's a day to honor all who have served and still serve. And it has its roots in World War I. So this is where the history nerd in me comes in. World War I was called the war to end all wars. Now, unfortunately, you and I in 2020 know that that didn't happen. That first world war did not end all wars. But we had in November, the 11th month, on the 11th day at the 11th hour, a peace treaty was signed and that first world war ended, and they hoped it would end all war. And that is when we have the beginnings of Veterans Day, Armistice Day. It's called also Remembrance Day. So we're remembering back to that time in history when this war had been fought for freedom around the world, and we're celebrating those who were willing to die for us. So in Memorial Day in the spring, we celebrate those who have died for us. But at Veterans Day, we celebrate all those who are willing to die for us. So it was mentioned in the introduction that my husband was killed in action in Afghanistan two years and a week ago. The same day that he was shot and killed, another American soldier was shot but lived. Is his service any less valuable than my husband's who gave his life? This young soldier who was willing to give his life? So I invite you to think about that when we celebrate Veterans Day. What is Veterans Day? Why do we celebrate Veterans Day? How is it different from Memorial Day and who are our veterans? So I want you to look around the room that you're in, and I really want you to raise your hand for this question when you have an answer. How many of you personally know a veteran? You can raise your hand, and I should at least know a couple that were in the video from your teachers here at the school. How many of you are related to a veteran? Aunt, uncle, grandparent, parent. Okay, now how many of you actually live in the same household as a veteran? A parent or a sibling? Okay, there's a few of you. The next question I want you to think a little bit deeper. We've asked if you know what a veteran is. I've asked if you know who any veterans are. But do you know anything about any veterans? Do you know anything about any veterans? Do you know who they are? Where they served? What branch they served in? What parts of the world maybe they've served in? What job they had while they were there? Have you ever asked a veteran why? they served? Have you ever asked why they may be enlisted in the army or went off to boot camp with the Marines? I invite you to think about that today and then I challenge you to find someone today. 
Whether you can ask him in person or send him a text, find somebody on social media, ask a distant family member on the phone if you know how to actually make a phone call. But I want you to think of a veteran you know or know of, and I want you to find something out about that veteran. What do you know about that veteran? Veterans Day around the world is often known as Remembrance Day, but we can't remember the things we don't know. For example, I can't remember going to boot camp because I've never been there. I can't remember going to war because that hasn't been my job. I can't remember what it's like to be separated from my family while fighting from freedom in a distant land. I can't remember that because I haven't experienced that. But I can ask someone who has. Raise your hand again if you live with a veteran currently, someone in your own household is a veteran. Look around you. That's a really small number. Less than 1% of the American population is in the military right now. Less than 1%. So that means only 1% currently remember what it's like to have done those things I just mentioned. Now, if you add all the veterans who are still living but not currently serving, we might get to 7 or 8%. 7 or 8% of America has the memories of what the price of freedom really looks like. Have you ever asked them to share those memories with you? Have you ever said to your dad or your neighbor or your aunt, hey, why did you join the military? What was it like? What did you learn? How did your time in the military affect you out of the military? How has it affected your family, your career, your personal outlook on the future of this country? We talk a lot about the importance of thanking a veteran, and I think we should. I'm the kind of person, maybe at the airport, I see a man or woman in uniform, I'm gonna go up to him and say, thank you for your service. I'm gonna have my kids write him a note on Veterans Day, hey, thank you for your service. And that's great. But if we stop there, we can't really honor them because we don't have their memories of the service they provided in our behalf. Going back to that 1% concept, 1% of American citizens currently serve in the military. That means 1% of this country provides the freedom for the other 99 of us, 99%. There are 99 of me, regular everyday American citizens enjoying freedoms, liberties, and the chance to pursue happiness, all because of the service of each one man or woman in uniform. So I challenge you on this Veterans Day to find someone that is a veteran, whether they're still serving or have served. Find something out about them, about their service. And if they're a little hesitant to tell you, because veterans often are, they don't serve for the glory or so that they can sit down and tell you all the war stories, gently remind them that you'll never know what the price of freedom is like if they don't tell you. You'll never be able to appreciate the sacrifice they've made if you're not aware of it in the first place. And so to any veterans who might be listening, I invite you and encourage you to share your stories. It's important for the rest of us as Americans to honor you, to remember not only you individually in the service that you've rendered, but the price of freedom that has been paid for almost 250 years in this country. So you think about that question, what is a veteran? Who are the veterans you know? Do you know anything about those veterans? What has their service in the military done for the rest of their lives? I'm gonna lead you to one more question I want you to really think about for the next few minutes. It's a question I've had a lot of time to think about in the past couple of years. But before I ask that question, I'm gonna back up and tell you. While I was teaching here in Spanish Fork, I was set up on a blind date with a young man from Arizona, a young man who had grown up loving his country, majoring in political science, eager and desirous and ambitious to change the world by serving his country. Shortly before the time that we were set up on a blind date, the attacks of 9-11 had happened. The Twin Towers had fallen. Terrorists had struck on American soil for the first time in our lifetime and for generations. And this young man whose name was Brent Taylor felt something within him motivating him to want to serve in the military. And so he did. 
we were dating. Dating got more serious. We got to the point where we, wanted, we knew we wanted to spend our lives together, but we knew this path would involve service to our country. On a Saturday in June, he proposed to me and I said yes. And three days later, we walked hand in hand into the Utah National Guard headquarters building. He raised his hand to the square and took the oath of enlistment as a United States soldier. He served four deployments. He was elected to political office in my hometown of North Ogden, Utah. He worked with Iraqis. He worked with people from Afghanistan. He worked with NATO soldiers from around the world. He learned to lead. He learned to listen. He learned how to bring opposing viewpoints together and to come up with common ground. He learned above all that as Americans, we have so much more that unites us than divides us, even in times of political campaigns and differing opinions. This young man that I met while teaching high school here in Spanish Fork went on to become the mayor of North Ogden City, Utah. It was the end of 2017 and I had given birth to our seventh baby. Seven. That's a lot of babies. We had this beautiful family, these young crazy children, a lot going on. My husband was mayor and the call to serve came once again. And he was needed not only just here in Utah as a National Guardsman, but his service was needed back overseas in Afghanistan. It was a call he didn't hesitate to answer, and I didn't hesitate to support him. He went to honor not only our family, to protect not only our way of life, but to bring honor to all those who had gone before him. The soldiers, the sailors, the airmen, the Marine, the Coast Guardsmen who had fought and sought to provide each of us with a better way of life. He went so he could hold his head up high with his forebears. He went so that he could protect the American way of life and the chance to have opportunities and freedom, not only if you happen to have American citizenship. He deployed in January of 2018, and on November 3rd of 2018, I got a knock on my front door from two Army officers in full dress uniform coming to tell me that he had been killed in action that morning. Now again, Veterans Day is not just a day to celebrate the dead. It's not just a day to celebrate those who have given their lives for us. My husband's military service has a lot longer history than just the day and the way he died. But his service is symbolic of the service of hundreds of thousands of others. Like that young soldier who was with my husband the day he was killed, it's not just those who do die for us, but those who are willing to die for us. Every day they put on that uniform, every single veteran across America and around the world, when they put on their uniform, they're telling you and they're telling me they're willing to die for us. Think about that. That's what Veterans Day is all about. And that brings me back to my last question. The question I've asked myself hundreds of times. The question I'm sure my mother-in-law has asked herself hundreds of times. The question I need you to ask yourself and the question that only you can decide. And that question is, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth the blood that has been spilt, the lives that have been risked, the challenges that have been faced, the sacrifices that have been made, the families that have been separated by the service member needing to go answer that call to serve, not just here, but around the world? Is it worth it? My answer is yes. The price of freedom is incredibly high, but what if that price were not to be paid? When you think about Veterans Day, when you get to know a veteran, when you look for ways to do more than just say thank you for your service, I would invite you and encourage you to think about honoring those who have served by living a life of honor yourself. You decide every day whether or not their service is worth it. They're willing to die for you to have the freedom and the opportunity to live the life you get to choose to live. So will it be worth it? You're the only one who can decide. Thank you.